I'm Simon Claxton, president and founder of the Sophia Miriam Foundation, based in the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Welcome to yet another program. This is our fourth session, 2023, and today we'll be doing financial freedom and entrepreneurship. It's a pleasure to have you young ladies back with us today. Welcome to all our partners throughout the Caribbean and in the UK and in the US. How's everyone today? Let me get a yay. <laughs> yay. Oh, Ricardo, that yay doesn't sound too yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful, bright and sunny day here. Ah, I can see the sun at your end as well. So lovely. Right, guys. So we want to say a special thanks to our sponsors, the Unitrust Corporation of Trinidad and Tobago, National Lotteries Control Board, NLCB. Trinidad Generation Unlimited, TGU, uh, for their support. Um, we really, really thank them. Uh, without them, this program would not be possible. And we also have the National Gas Company of Trinidad and Tobago, NGC. Okay. Right. So Princess says she's amazing. Fantastic. Okay. So we're going to invite Deborah to give us a word of prayer. And we are going to go into our financial freedom program shortly, where the girls will get a little taste of our fun gamified program, introducing the concepts of financial freedom and entrepreneurship. And we will also have Dr. Joppy from in the USA, who will give us an idea about social entrepreneurship. Okay. And today the girls will have a chance to introduce any of their business ideas, we have loads of mentors on from our various partner organizations. So this is an opportunity for you young ladies to tell us what you're thinking of in the future for your business and any ideas, questions that you have. We can always, you know, give you advice and help you flesh out your ideas. Okay. So now is the opportunity. Grab hold of it. Uh, we might have a short break, like a five minute break during this session. So if we are to have that, I'll let you know. Okay, guys. So let's invite Deborah from Dominica, our ambassador there. Give us a word of prayer before we start. Hi, good morning. Good morning from Dominica. It's such a beautiful day over here. Beautiful, beautiful, fresh and and beautiful. Okay, let's let's come and pay some attention to call the, the presence of the Lord. Ah. Thank you, Spirit of Life, for this new day, this brand new, this never ever before lived day. Thank you, Spirit of Life, for this brand new, this gift of a brand new day. We gather here today under your care and protection. Thank you for your loving kindness that never fail us. We thank you for those with us that you would guide our thoughts and action to bring you glory. Strengthen us and fill us with your presence. May the girls here continue to be empowered and go on to empower others so that we can have an even better world. And bless us and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank amen, you amen. very much, amen. Deborah. Right. So, Ricardo, any words before we start our financial freedom session? Yeah, well, you know, when you ask me if I have any words, the answer is more than likely going to be yes. So I just well, want to welcome everyone this morning. I want to thank you guys for your time. I want to thank you for being so interactive over the past couple of weeks. Oh, this is a serious matter. And it would be remiss of me to not bring it up. We want to just do a quick mental health check-in with you guys. So the question I'm going to ask before we move into the official part of the session is how are you? Is everybody good this morning? If you're not so good, you could say so. You can turn on your mics and respond. I'm seeing JJ saying no. People posting in the chat. I want to hear some voices. I'm having a wonderful day. I'm having a okay day. Mm -hmm. right. I'm having a good day. Go ahead, Tanisha. My day has been smoothly. I don't really know how to feel about my day. I, I don't know. 
that is pretty much non stop, so I don't know how it's going to go. Yeah, I like that approach. I, I take that approach a lot of the times too. We um it's not every day is gonna be a good day. Some days challenge you, some days push you, some days feel like they're squeezing you. And for those of us having good days, thank God for it. You know, do your best to share some of that goodness, smile with somebody around you, pay somebody a compliment. For those of us who are not having such a good day, hopefully it gets better than this. That's that's the thing. Uh, the only well, not the only way, right? But when you hit rock bottom, the only way to go is up. If you have a tough start, well, it's not about how this day starts. It's about how much better it can get and what you're willing to do to feel better. Deborah has given us some amazing breathing exercises, and you know, just the the ohms and the deep breathing. You know, the throw your shoulders, drop your shoulders, the you know, putting your feet firmly on the ground. Sometimes it's really just about taking that moment to be in the feeling that you're having. Reset your body with some deep breathing. Try to figure out what thoughts have you uncomfortable or what experiences, you know, making the day a little more challenging and decide to have a better day. You could sit and wait for the day to get better, but that's kind of like sitting and waiting for a sandwich to make itself you're more likely to get that sandwich if you get up and start getting. You're more likely to have a better day if you do something. Even if it's stop, people forget that stopping is something as well. Right? So if you feel flustered and overwhelmed, just breathe through it. Take a time, pray if you're so inclined, pause, breathe through it. You'd be amazed at how powerful a deep breath can be. I have a question. Sure. Well, if you mentally cannot breathe, like you're so stressed out, you can you can barely breathe at all. What do you do then? But what I've done when I've had those situations is recognize that that is in my mind more than it is my body. My body is responding to what is going on around me. So what I try to do is manage what is going on around me. So don't worry about not being able to breathe. Because that actually makes it worse. I want you to just focus on two words. Just two. Despite everything that is going on. Two words. In and out. If you all have a moment, we could try it. Literally, sitting right here where you are with your body telling you that you're stressed or your mind not wanting to slow down. This is a thing that I've done myself a lot. Because I used to have trouble falling asleep and that type of thing. And I realize that I'm thinking of too many things at the same time. So I just choose to focus on two things and only one at a time. So the first one is in. And then out. In. And out. And what happens is when you're breathing in, other thoughts start coming into your head and you have to push those thoughts away and just bring it back to in. It doesn't matter if you're feeling hungry, if you're feeling upset, right? if a mosquito bites you. Well, if a mosquito bites you, you should probably deal with a mosquito. But at that moment, it's just about that one thing. In, as Deborah says, in with the good and then out with the bad. With the bad. In so, with yeah. the peace. Mm -hmm. Out with the stress. Yes, Deborah. In with the courage. Out with the fear. In with the gratitude. Out with the outrageous love. Spread it. You feel it? What I want to share with you today is a little thing on the weather. Our emotions is like the weather. Just like the weather changes, our emotion changes. So let me show you this quick little snippet here. It's going to be a couple minutes. Um, well, this is so beautiful to understand that your emotion is, you can see this? Excellent, excellent. So this is the emotional weather forecast. 
So as it's as it depicting here, happy, sunny, one day you can be on the beach, you're blissfully happy, you know, you're getting everything you want, you know, you're being served by you, you're the best food, and it's sunny, but then you have to go back to school, you have to go back to work. And then it changes. Anything good or bad will change. And then one moment you're going to be feeling calm, hopeful, or anxious, sad, or angry. It all changes. It's just like the weather. And then, you know, it can be the rainbow. Everything, you know, you're feeling so hopeful. You're looking forward to the future. You're looking forward to go to university. You're looking forward to go back to school. So it's all part of the emotion. And then here, check this out. This is the weather forecast. Or maybe I can do a slide view. Hold on. Uh, slide show would be better. Yeah. So this is the emotional weather forecast. As Ricardo checking with you, how are you feeling today? So today you can be feeling stormy. It's, you know, it's rainy. You feel a bit sad. You feel a bit shameful, confusing. But that's okay. And then tomorrow, you know, this is telling you tomorrow is going to be a better day. You know, like the, the sun always rise no matter what. So tomorrow is a new date for a new beginning. And then tomorrow it can be a, it can be a little bit stormy too. You know, you can still feel in the pain. You just have to sit with it and know what you're feeling and understand what you're feeling. Sit with it, ride with it, you know, and acknowledge it. And then the next day you can feel the storm clearing. You're starting to feel better. You, you know, you're accepting calls. You're reaching out. You're getting out of bed. And then the next day, broom, sunshine, you know, you start feeling, you know, a more gratitude, fun. You're looking, you know, to get engaging in activities. So we're just, we're nature and nature is in us. When we look, observe nature, we gain wisdom. I thank you. Thanks so much for that, Deborah. You, you came in right on cue and with the, the best information as well, too, because you see the weather, some people like hot sun, some people like overcast, you know, you put on your music, you drink your hot cocoa, and you, you wrap up in a blanket and you don't do anything for the day. But just like the weather, our moods can change. And sometimes we don't know why they change. It's okay to have feelings you don't understand. Give it its time. And then focus on the feelings that you want to have and do the thing to get you there. If I want to exercise, I'm going to listen to some upbeat music. If I want to sleep, I'm going to listen to some mellower music. I, I can do things to affect my mood. It might not change everything that is going on around me, but I do have some control over what I do based on what's happening to me. So I could stay rainy. I could stay stormy, or I could decide, listen, the weather's going to change, my mood is going to change, the sun is going to come up, the clouds are going to break. What am I going to do to help me get there? So and I'm not saying the things that are happening in your day are your fault. I am saying that you do have both the responsibility and the power to decide what you are going to do about it. And I hope by the end of the session, we have better days than how it started and you know what even if today doesn't work out god willing we'll try again tomorrow so on that note i would like to hand back over to simone claxon our founder so that she could put this um thing back on course i'm really glad you guys took the time to do this with me though thank you thank you very much ricardo and deborah um i feel as though we've Hit our target today and we could close up. Seriously, just touching in with the girls and you know, I mean, it's so important our mental health and our mental well-being. I think really it's the first thing we need to really touch base with at the beginning of the day, you know, see how we feel and you know, do the things that are necessary to get us where we want to be. Because at the beginning of the day, we may not really feel how we want to, but you know, we can change that as Ricardo indicated. You know, the type of music that you listen to could help. Um, if you want to exercise, you listen to a beat. And if you want to relax, if you want to calm your nerves, there's various, you know, frequencies of music that you can listen to in order to help calm yourself and get you in that kind of, you know, good mood and spirit, you know. 
and the breathing, fantastic technique, fantastic. I think we all need to start our day with that. And you'll see it'll help. Get into the fresh air, you know, first thing in the morning when you get up and just do some deep breathing, you know, clear your lungs and just set yourself up for, you know, a productive day. It will, it will help. You know, nutrition as well, it plays a major, major part, you know, and the, the type of water that you drink. So look into all of these things, um, ladies. Okay, so, wow, what a fantastic session so far. So let's get rearing. We are going into our financial freedom session with our financial freedom program. Okay, so we are an ambassador to this program. It's a program that's developed by some Irish developers. I'm going to share my screen now and just introduce you to the program. And we are also going to do a lesson where we learn some of the concepts that the wealthy people engage in. Welcome to Financial Freedom, an interactive, gamified, rewards-based entrepreneur learning program that will help equip your kids and teens with tools they need to be financially smart. Let's take a tour of the Fundamental Campus, starting with the home page. Here, you will have access to all things financial, including your courses, my rewards, my goals, and my profile pages. Whenever there is news, you will also see it on the home page. This will cover new features, games, social, and exciting Fundable Zone information. Moving on to my profile page, you can check out all your available courses and even purchase others. Go onto your downloads area and join the Financial Freedom community. Let's make our way to my courses. Financial Freedom uses story-based learning complemented with a strong reward system. You will notice that there are locked and unlocked modules. This ensures you know where to start from where you last left off. Our main course, Leap for Kids and Teens, is broken down into four sections, standing for Learn, Earn, Accelerate, and Play. Let's get started by clicking on Level 1. As you complete a module, you will earn gems and points. Your gem evolves as you progress through Leap. Each gem has a value, and you will notice that your points are getting higher and higher as you complete different activities, games, and tasks. You can check out your kids' and teens' results in My Rewards and Parent Zone pages. When you want to finish the lesson, click the Next Module button or use the progress bar by clicking on the lesson you want. Have fun in each leap as you enjoy games, challenges, and exciting interactive tasks. We all like to have fun, and it's fun to play games against friends. That's why game-based learning is built into every level of the course. Games can be played over and over as you work your way up the leaderboard while cementing the core points of the module. Each game is different and has its own leaderboards for you to climb. Check out the vision board in My Goals tab. Your vision board helps you understand and focus on achieving your goals. You can upload images of anything you desire and place it in the areas of health, wealth, business, education, family, giving, fun, and spirituality. Upload images on your computer by clicking here or scanning this QR code with your phone's camera. The AI does everything else, arranging the images into your perfect vision board that you can screen grab or print. Remember to put your vision board in a place that you will see it, like your phone wallpaper or your bedroom door. Visually seeing your goals will help you achieve them. Capture your goals here and tick them off as you achieve them. If your kids and teens need a little relaxation, take a trip to the Zen Zone, a perfect place for meditation and mindfulness. Enjoy calming music with picturesque graphics. Financial freedom teaches more than just financial principles. It teaches the value of money by exposing you to multiple easy to start businesses. Each module features easy to start businesses, giving you all the tools you need to see the money rolling in. Think your business or idea has what it takes? Check out the Fundable Zone, a room full of investors where you can gain sales experience, benefit from their feedback, or potentially get the funds you need for your business. 
Keep a lookout for when the next Fundable Zone dates are and go through the tips on how to perfect your presentation. Remember, you're here to learn and practice makes perfect. So try to get in on as many as possible. We can't wait for you to take your own look around and explore. Financial freedom, teaching kids and teens how to become financially smart. Right guys, so that's the intro to the program. So let's get into our first lesson with Shifani. And that is leap lesson level one. We're gonna to start to learn. And then we'll learn how to earn. Right, so three rules that the rich live by. Welcome to Learn. I'm so excited to get started. In this first Learn, I have something that if you really pay attention to, and of course implement, will change your life. Now I know that sounds dramatic, so let me explain. In this video, I want to share with you what we are calling three rules rich people live by. Now these three rules will feed into everything that we cover here at Financial. I'll be referring back to these and they really are the foundation of any financial success. Now in this video, I'll share with you what these three laws are, these rules are, and we'll break down each one into a bit more detail in this month's learn. Sound good? Okay, awesome. So rule number one, the first rule that rich people live by is you must have multiple streams of income. Let me repeat you must have multiple streams of income. Essentially, this means you can't just rely on a job. Again, I'm just giving you the overview here. We'll take a look at this in more detail in the next video. But for now, I want you to know that the first rule that rich people live by is you must have multiple streams of income, okay? Awesome. So rule number two is you must start saving now. Let me repeat, you must start saving now. We've already discussed how lucky you are to have age on your side. But guess what? Hardly anyone saves. That's why most people have no money. Anybody that is wealthy has learned to become a good saver. So you need to become a good saver early on. So rule number two, you must start saving now. Again, we'll go into each thing a little bit deeper later. And rule number three is you must educate yourself. You already are ahead of the game because you're here. All change starts with education. Now, you may have heard the saying, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. Most people never educate themselves in life, and therefore, nothing changes. We don't want this for you. Now, as dramatic as this will sound, these three rules contain within them the power to transform your life financially. Okay, so we've covered the three rules. Let's dive deeper into each one in the next video. All right, guys, so can anybody tell me one of the rules? Type it in the chat. Just start saving now. Start saving now while you're young. Don't wait till you're 30 and 40. Great. Fantastic. Whatever little you have, it's five dollars. Start putting it away. Educate yourself. Educate yourself. That's correct. It's all about learning. You must have multiple incomes. Multiple streams of incomes. Very good. Great. So let's dive deeper into each rule. Now that we've covered the three rules in the last video, in this one, let's look a little bit more into detail about each one. Do you remember what the last one was? The first rule is you must have multiple streams of income. You must. By the way, this first rule often shocks older people. It may shock your parents. Why? Because in our parents' day and age, they were taught to get a good job, work hard, and that should be enough. Well, most people that just rely on one job are struggling these days. Here's something that I want you to remember, and it's important. You can't earn your way to wealth. What do I mean by that? What I mean is just having a job and a job alone is not going to make you wealthy. Sure, you may be comfortable, but we want to encourage you to go beyond that. Everything has changed from how it was in our parents' day and age. For most people, having a job is not the path to riches. Now let me be crystal clear about something. There's absolutely nothing wrong with getting a job. We are not saying don't get a job. What we are saying is to think beyond that. And we want to encourage you to think bigger than just having a job and doing nothing else. That's our message to you. Because for long-term financial independence, unless you happen to have a very well-paid job, you will need other ways of making money. 
In other words, you must have multiple streams of income. So that's rule number one. And in Earn, we will be exploring some income streams for you to start working on that. Okay, so I think you get how important this first rule is to build multiple streams of income. And I just wanna say, just by you knowing this already, you're ahead of most people. Let's look at rule number two in the next video. Let's see. Right, so multiple streams of income. Um, as Shivani is saying, you know, in the past, the trend was just, you know, go to school, get your subjects, get a job, and, you know, live. But now we understand that you have to have multiple streams of income in order to really live, strive, and survive in the world today. It's changed from, you know, the days of our parents. And um, further on in the video, see as Shivani is saying, sometimes it sounds really kind of strange, you know, to um, the older folks. Um, even to persons like myself and older, when you mention, you know, having multiple streams of income, because they are used to the traditional way of, you know, going to school, getting your subjects, getting a job, right? So it's always good to have multiple streams of income. Can anybody tell me any uh, reason why it's good to have more than one stream of income? If you have more than one source of money, so if I have a main job and a side job, two sources of money. Right, it could be a main job, a side job, or um, it doesn't have to be exactly a job, but it could be um, some other revenue generating like entrepreneurship, Ventia, um, that way you're not fully reliant on one source. Okay, so if something goes wrong with one source, you still have you know, another source of income, right? That's the main reason, basically, um, and also in order to create that wealth, okay, because working one job alone. It's like, okay, there's 24 hours in a day. And if you, even if you work this full 24 hours, there's only a certain amount of money that you can earn. If you're earning $5 an hour, you could only earn $5 an hour for 24 hours. You can't have 25 or 26 hours in a day. So you could earn, only earn a certain amount of money. It's limited. However, if you have other streams of income, for example, some other entrepreneurial activity that's generating money for you, even if you're not actually going out there and working. So you could be at home, you could be sleeping and you could have business, you know, going on that you're not actually, you know, physically laboring in, but it's generating revenue. And that is a source of income. Okay. And that way you can have unlimited income. There's no, you know, limit. The sky is the limit. Okay. The amount of work that you put in will determine the amount of income that you generate. Okay. So let me see if we can get Shivani back on track. Okay, so let's move on to the next video. So we've covered multiple streams of income. So now start saving. Has anybody started saving as yet? Who started saving? Put up your hands. Says been five or so. so wonderful. So Leah's been saving since she's five. Anybody else? Two participants raise their hand. How many? Only two people we have saved in here. Five. Come on, guys. Seven. Eight. Nine. Anybody else has started saving? Ten. Wonderful. So you have to start saving from now. Okay? The earlier you start, the more money you can accumulate. And later on, uh, we won't go through this lesson now, but there's something called compound interest. So when you start saving and you put your money into the banks and you start saving at an early age, the interest is compounded on your savings and you get more and more money as your money accumulates. Okay, so as your capital accumulates, you get more and more interest on your capital. Your capital is your savings, basically. Okay, so let's start saving now. Does anybody have like bank accounts? So you save like in a piggy bank or under a mattress? I save it in the piggy bank and every month. Um, so we go to the bank and we deposit it in our homes. Lovely. So there's various ways you can, you can save. You can save in your piggy bank and then you go into your bank account. The second rule that rich people live by is you must start saving now. In this month's Accelerate, I'll offer you a simple saving system that you can start today, but we'll come to that later. Okay, so for now, I really, really, really want you to understand the sooner you start to save, the more you will benefit. One of the secrets of the wealthy is they have learned to be good savers, and so we want the same for you. In fact, 
We're gonna encourage you to start saving a certain amount of everything you make or get given from this point onwards. More on this as we continue. So here's a question for you. How old are you? The reason I ask is because did you know the average wealthy person began to save when they were 14 years old? The average wealthy person began to work for money when they were 15? The average wealthy person started giving time or money to a charity when they are 23. And we're gonna talk about this a little later about helping others in play. So to sum it up, the second rule that rich people live by is you must start saving now. Let's get one thing clear. All I'm doing here is sharing with you what you need to do. As we continue here in financial, I will share with you how you can do this. So if you're thinking, okay, I know I need to save, but how do I do that? Don't worry, we will get to that really soon and I'm so excited. Okay, good, all right. Let's look at the third rule rich people live by. Can you remember what it was? <laughs> Let's see if you're right in the next video. All right guys, so the third rule is to educate yourself. And what does that mean? Anybody has any idea? To be knowledgeable. To be knowledgeable and spend, when to spend money and when not to. Right, so it's about gaining knowledge about finances, about spending, about saving, it's about investing, about entrepreneurship, okay? So you can read books, you can listen to the YouTube, you can Google. So it's all about gaining knowledge, okay? Educating yourself. And you know, in this um, world now, we have a lot of technology. So not only reading books, but there's uh, various ways, you know, we can educate ourselves. Okay, so sometimes like even on TikTok and Facebook, there's educational um, videos and clips on finances and money and saving, etc. So these are the things that we are supposed to be engaging in. Okay. So let's see. Anybody knows Warren Buffett? Anybody heard the name before? Nope. No. No. Okay. Right. No, never. Do we have a never? Wow. Okay. Does Rayanne have a question or uh, Melanie? I, I think I saw some hands up. Feel free to unmute. I'm just going to um, answer the question you asked before. If we had an idea of what education uh, is. If we educate, sure. Go ahead. I think it means to have like a budget, a way to balance your income and expenditure. So in a way that you could save but also have enough to invest or still for charity or whatever you want to do with the other amount. Like usually wonderful. wonderful. Usually a surplus budget would be better. Wow. So you seem to be very knowledgeable, Melanie. Melanie, right? Yes. Yes. Great. So educating you. yourself. Yeah, it would allow you to make a budget, okay? So when you educate yourself, you learn about budgeting. Um, you learn about putting aside a certain percentage to save, putting aside a certain percentage to spend, putting aside a certain percentage, maybe for charity, if you want to give to a particular cause or give to someone. Um, so as we go through the, the various lessons, you learn more about those things, okay? Wonderful. Okay, guys, so let's hear about Warren Buffett and how successful people think. They educate themselves. Has anybody heard of Robert Kiyosaki? Which dad, poor dad? Anybody heard of that book? Raise your hand if you've heard of it. My mother started reading a book to like learn about finances. Fantastic. Great. Right, Petronella said of the book. Wonderful. Nice. So which dad, poor dad? I would recommend that you get that book. Um, there's one for teens, and it teaches various concepts of entrepreneurship and about saving and investing and revenue generation, okay? And it teaches you that a job, um, it's good to get a job, but a job isn't enough because a job normally is J-O-B, just over broke. Anybody hear that saying before? Just over broke. Right, it just keeps you in one particular place most of the time and you're just always there waiting for the next paycheck and the next paycheck 
and the next paycheck and it's like a cycle and you can't get out of it. So you can't wait for month 10 because, you know, I'm going to get paid on the 30th. And then by the fifth of the month, you have no money and you can't wait for month 10 again. So it just kind of keeps you in a cycle. Okay. When you find various ways of generating revenue, okay, moving from a job, obviously you have to start somewhere and then you gain into self-employment and when you move to self-employment, you have a bit more control over your finances to an extent. However, if you don't work, you know, you are generating the money again, just like the job. So if something's wrong with you and you don't work, you don't get money. Okay. When you move over into the field where you actually um, have a business and you move into investing, then you can stay wherever you are. If you're in Trinidad, you invest your money, stay in a company. It could be anywhere in Trinidad and the US and Australia. And it's working for you. Your money is actually working for you and you are not working for money. Okay. So the whole concept behind what Robert Kiyosaki's book is that money should work for you. You should not be working for money. Because as I mentioned, there's only so much hours in the day. So if you're working for money, so you're working for $5 an hour and you work for 24 hours, you can only work for a certain amount of money. But if money is working for you, it doesn't matter how many hours, how many minutes in the day, etc. The money is always there working and building and growing. So that's the concept. Okay, guys. So I would advise you to get Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And there is a simpler one for teens. Welcome back. So we've covered number one and number two. The third rule that rich people live by is something that you're actually doing right now. You're learning. And you know, that's a rare quality. But when you realize how much you earn is related to how much you learn, you will find that learning becomes addictive. And the rich know this. The third rule of the rich is that they are continually educating themselves. Let me tell you something about Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is generally regarded as one of the most successful investors ever. In an interview he gave for his biography, Warren Buffett was asked what would be his number one piece of advice for anybody wanting to become wealthy. And what do you think he said? He didn't even hesitate. His answer was, I sit in my office and I learn. He learns. Now, don't you think it makes sense for us to listen to someone who has done exactly what it is that we want to do? If Warren Buffett says that learning is the number one thing he has done to increase his wealth, I think we should pay attention. Warren Buffett says that he likes to go to bed smarter than when he woke up. And he's one of the richest men in the world. But for now, let's sum up this video. The third rule that you must live by if you want to be rich is you must educate yourself. And that's exactly what you are doing here. Right, guys. So what are your thoughts? I see we have some entrepreneurs. We have Peggy. We have Larian. Any more entrepreneurs in the house? Well, Deborah, our ambassador in Dominica, she's an entrepreneur. Oh, princess. Wonderful. Petronella Solomon. Okay, great. Amazing. Wonderful. So you'll get a chance to share your entrepreneurial venture with us. And maybe tell us where you started and how you started, okay? And give us some tips. And that will encourage some of the other girls to get into entrepreneurship as well. Nice, so we're gonna close off this session and move into our session with Dr. Joppy on social entrepreneurship, okay? Our partner at Project Cultivate. Good morning, good morning. Hey, beautiful people, citizens of the world. It is my pleasure and honor to be with you today. I can't tell you how excited I am. I'm in my element. I'm here representing Project Cultivate. And first and foremost, I want to thank Simone and the Set by Marion Foundation for even asking me to partner and to all the other partners in the different countries. I salute you all for the work that you're doing in your respective countries and just the impacts that you're making. So today, my assignment is to talk to you about social entrepreneurship. And I saw we have some entrepreneurs here in the room today. I know Ricardo had posted in your group chat the questions, what are you passionate about? What is it that you wanna do? And I'm not sure the exact questions, but I, I think it went along the lines of, what is it that you're interested in? What is it that you're passionate about? And you'll find out that 
um, one of the one of the goals of of um, starting your own business is to do something that you're passionate about. So I'm going to screen share. We're going to jump in today. And before I even get into that, let me just tell you, I'm rude. Forgive me. Forgive me. I love what I do. I love to talk. I talk fast. So if I'm going too fast, ask me to slow down. It's okay. Interrupt me. Ask me to slow down. I have a short period of time to spend with you today and I can talk about social entrepreneurship for the next year. But I only have 10 to 15 minutes, so I don't want to take up my time just rambling, rambling, rambling. I want it to be beneficial for you. But just very, very briefly about me. I grew up in corporate America. What does that mean? I did all the things that, you know, our parents tell us to do. Go to college, get an education and get a job and work and go through the ranks. And, you know, you go in an entry level and then you become a manager and you become a director and then you become a vice president. I did all that. I became partners in, in international companies. I traveled around the world. I've worked in Moldova. I've worked in Russia. I've worked in South Africa. I've worked in Azerbaijan. I've worked in Romania um, when I worked in corporate. And because of that, when I decided to leave in 2016, after all the years of experience, and one of the things we just learned was educate yourself. I educated myself. I sat in my office and I learned. And in 2016, I made the decision to leave corporate America and start my own business. Two days after I stepped out on faith, because let me tell you something, it was a faith move. You get used to having six figure, seven figure salary. And then now you have your own business. And it's like, oh my God, where's this money going to come from? <laughs> you know, the bank is, is not going to be the same if I don't work and I don't make it happen. So in 2016, I started one of our consulting firm and I haven't looked back. Um, we're talking about social entrepreneurship today. I'm a social entrepreneur. I also have nonprofit. I also am a serial entrepreneur. And so you might wonder, what is a serial entrepreneur? Anything serial, S-E-R-I-A-L, means many. I have many different businesses. I have five right now. And I am super, super, super excited. I'm about to start my sixth one, but I can't tell you what it is now because if I have to tell you, I have to kill you. So we're not ready to we're not ready to release that. So I'm excited about it. Today we are going to focus on social entrepreneurship. Let me I'm gonna start my screen share. Jeez, Lord. <laughs> I do this all the time, every day. <laughs> I don't know what in the world. So today we are going to talk about social entrepreneurship. And a lot of times, y'all, um, when I think about social entrepreneurship, I just call a business with a purpose. What is social entrepreneurship? How many of you in here know what social entrepreneurship is? Anybody want to jump off real quick and tell me what you think social entrepreneurship is? Anybody? No. Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Can I ask, uh, like, a public entrepreneurship so, like, everybody can know what you're doing? Is that okay? Mm hmm Okay. Anyone else? I think it's, like, can it making connections with different businesses to form a business. Making connections to form businesses? Okay. Well, let me tell you that you both are... In that vein, so social entrepreneurship encompasses any type of business. So oftentimes people get it confused. They think that it, it's a nonprofit, but really social entrepreneurship is any type of business from a startup to a small business to a large business, and it could be a nonprofit as well. Um, these, these, uh, it, these companies actually embark on um, a social and impactful mission. That's what social entre entrepreneurship is about. It's really having a mission. And you don't really hear big companies like Apple and Microsoft talk about their mission. They're really talking about the bottom line and how much money they're making, their products, their services. Whereas nonprofit organizations and social entrepreneurs talk about their mission. Um, and then these organizations also, social entrepreneurs also, um, pursue the mission as well as profit, okay? So we're going to talk about pursuing the mission, pursuing profit, making sure there's a balance between the two, and we'll take it from there. So I'm going to start my, let me start my presentation. Okay. 
Now, I started to tell you a little bit about me as going through corporate America, starting my own business. I said I'm a serial entrepreneur. And so I have several businesses. One is Project Cultivate. Project Cultivate helps girls around the world. We serve girls in Kenya and Ghana in Dubai, we serve girls here in the United States. And when I say serve, whatever needs um, are identified, companies and organizations reach out to us. And if it aligns with our goal and with our mission, then we're so excited to help girls. And so that's one of the reasons why we're here today. We're here today to provide information, to network, to mentor and, and be of service to you all in any way that we can. I also have, um, Pearls Management, which is a business management company. We have celebrities, we have musicians, we have artists, and we basically, in a nutshell, just help them manage their business. We have International Shades of Beauty, which is an international hair, beauty, fashion, wellness, and business trade show where we bring the creme de la creme in the industry, in the hair, beauty, fashion, wellness, and business industry from around the world to come on the platform. Our main purpose, you all, is really to uh, pronounce and announce the message that all shades matter even melanated people, melanated skin matter. So we spend a lot of time on promoting that. Then I have a real estate company called RSJ Enterprises where we have properties and we engage in property management and rental properties and we provide housing for people. And then I have, um, what else do I have? One Accord, I have Pearls Management, I have International Sage of Beauty, I have RSJ Enterprise, Project Cultivate, and then my sixth business that I'm, I'm getting ready to start. You'll be the you'll be the first to know after we launch. So or just before we started this session with Simone talking about finance, um, and they said multiple streams of income, I made a way to have multiple streams of incomes. Yes, I have businesses. Project Cultivate is a nonprofit. The other businesses are all for profit. And um, there's other things that we engage in that also helps bring profit to whatever organization is, you know, the purpose for that time. So definitely take advantage of the information that you're receiving here today. Ask plenty of questions. If you have a passion, if you have goals to start your own business, be it a social entrepreneur um, or what have you, please please pursue your passion and your dreams because I sure did. So what is social entrepreneurship? Let's talk about it. Social entrepreneurs focus on identifying and recognizing societal problems. Some of the problems that uh, social entrepreneurs may engage in to start businesses, it might be cleaning the environment. It could be eliminating poverty. It could be um, advocating for mental health, um, diagnoses with people, adults and children who have mental health um, concerns. So it really is identifying and recognizing societal problems. Let me say this to you. If you're going to start a business, and as I go through this, I'm going to say you a lot because I know we have entrepreneurs in the room and there are some social entrepreneurs. Some of you are very passionate about things that you've experienced in your life, that you see, and you have hopes and you have dreams. You want to change some things in the world. Pursue that. That could be your business. Every single business that I had came from a passion. It came from an answer. Let me tell you, entrepreneurs are really an answer to a problem. So if you've identified a problem, you come up with the solution. And that's how you can start your company. That's how things get started. That's how businesses get started. So identifying and recognizing societal problems, then there's a process of creating and developing innovative solutions to social issues. How are you going to solve the problems? What are the solutions? You have an opportunity to be creative and innovative. Technology is amazing. Our world is changing rapidly every day and there's so many resources out here. What can you do to help get your business started? Also, it applies creative and business-minded strategies to develop an appropriate solution. So what strategies can you use? Again, I'm going to say you because I want you to start thinking in this vein if you have a passion to start a business. What strategies can you use? What will you do? How will you do it? Who will you involve and engage to help you get started? Social entrepreneurs and social entrepreneurship attracts, this is true, attracts increasing amounts of talent, 
people, we're talking about people who can help talented people, gifted people who have the wisdom and the skill set that maybe you don't have that can help you grow your business, expand your business, scale your business. So if you're if you're um, putting it together in the right way and you're involving the right people and you're coming up with great strategies, you will attract money. I promise you, you will attract money. One of the things that my mentor, one of my, my mentors said to me, and he's a very famous guy. One of the things that he said to me was, Dr. Robin, never let money stop you from fulfilling a dream. And I was like, wow, because you need money. You know, there's the legal stuff and setting up your corporation and doing all this stuff that you have to do legally. All that stuff costs money. I'm an entrepreneur to begin with. And so I have to make sure that I'm a good steward over the money that I bring in for every one of my businesses. And so one of the things that he said to me was, I said, well, money, you need money to, to start a business and run a business. And he said something to me that was so profound and I found it to be true. And I want to share this with you. Never let money be the reason why you don't start a business or continue on if you start your business and things get rough and they will get rough. I promise you, you're going to have great days and you're going to have bad days where it looks like, oh my gosh, why should I still do this? We say for an entrepreneurship, there's the ebbs and the flows. The ebbs is when it seems like there's nothing coming in and the flows is where there's an abundance of money's coming in. I tell you this, this is what I want you to write down and remember. Where there is a vision, there's provision. Where there is a vision, you have a vision, you have a passion, you have a purpose. Whatever your vision is, I promise you, and I don't make promises unless I know them to be true and that what I'm saying is true, there's provision. The money will come. God always provides because I look at him as the one who gives me the visions. I am definitely a visionary in every company, every name of my company was God given, God directed. And, you know, I have ebbs and flows, but through it all, he's there and the money just happens to come. And I'm going to share a story with you very shortly that will bless you as well. And so another thing as far as social entrepreneurship, you want to assure or it assures that activities are aligned with the ultimate goal. What is your ultimate goal? You want to create social value. If you're a social entrepreneur, you look at your your mission, the social missions. What is it that you're trying to solve? What is it that you're passionate about? And you want to also make sure that you have the right finances to help you get that mission accomplished and to actualize it. So there has to be a balance, but your ultimate goal is creating social value. What you're doing, what products, what services you're providing has a social value for your media community, and maybe some of you in here for the world, your, your business might touch the world. And that would be a beautiful thing. And then the last thing I have to say for this time on social entrepreneurship is that it's a social mission driven organization. What do I mean by that? Mission driven, you focus on your purpose, you're focused on the why. Why? The passion, the purpose. Why did you start it? So the mission is what's highlighted. Your social mission is what drives the organization. Now, there's three types of organizational models in social entrepreneurship. We have a for-profit. As I said, you know, initially, social entrepreneurship encompasses any type of business, but it usually has a mission-focused right um, goal. So for for-profit businesses, they're traditional corporations. These businesses often include social entrepreneurship initiatives in their business plans. What am I saying? Most companies like Microsoft, like Coca-Cola, like Apple, um, have a philanthropic arm to it. They set aside money. I want you to listen to what I'm saying because I'm going to share something with you soon. And this is something as you're developing ideas about business and thinking about where can I get money? How can I get help? especially if you end up doing a not-for-profit organization, okay? Or a social, entre or a social entrepreneurship um, organization that focuses more on 
the mission and not so much the margin or another word for margin when I'm talking here is money. So these for-profit businesses put aside a, a pot of money that helps social justice issues, concerns, clean water, environment, feeding the homeless, um, eliminating poverty, um, farming, agriculture, they do. So remember that. Then there's hybrid companies, which Project Cultivate is an extension of a hybrid. Um, companies that use hybrid, they use both for-profit and non-profit models. The for-profit, they're going after profit. Money is, is part of it. The non-profit model is the mission, okay, the purpose. And so the hybrid is, okay, I know I'm, I want to have some money here, but I also my passion is what I'm doing. It's my service. It's my purpose. It's what I'm born to do. It's what I want to do. So hybrid companies are one of the models that are um, incorporated into social entrepreneurship. And then lastly, it's nonprofit organizations. And so nonprofits generally 100% function as nonprofits. They forego profit-seeking um, initiatives to focus on the social issue. Sometimes when nonprofits, and this can get them into trouble, so I'm doing education and training um, to people and organizations, I always say, remember, if you don't have margin, remember what I just said, margin equates to money. If you don't have margin, you can't fulfill your mission. So you have to have money, nonprofits, to fulfill your mission. There has to be a balance. So you can't really forego the profit. And I think really what this is trying to say and what people say when you hear that is don't let the money be the primary focus like you would see in a for-profit business, some of these traditional organizations where it's all about the bottom line. For nonprofits, it's about service. It's about helping people and helping our communities. So that's something I want you to remember. So now that you know what social entrepreneurship is, and now that you know that you have the ability, doesn't matter how old you are, we have social entrepreneurs and other types of entrepreneurs here in the US that are six years old, seven years old, eight years old, 15 years old. Age is not a factor. I mean, legally, there's some things that may take place and you, that's, you know, something that you'd have to look up um, as it relates to your respective country where you live. But here in the U.S., there's age limits and then but parents help with that. So they help their kids incorporate these businesses and they start at an early age so that when these children get to college age, they have money. And they're doing very well, very successful businesses. So what does it take? What's some of the characteristics that that uh, a social entrepreneur should have? And I'll just say this it relates and equates to any entrepreneur. You're a leader. I don't need to go into what that means because last week we had a phenomenal presentation on leadership. So social entrepreneurs, though, I will say, they focus on their mission, their mission leaders, they're leading their mission and they have opinions. Why do I think it's necessary to say opinion? When you're passionate about something, and this is just a piece of advice, when you're passionate about something and you know that you know that this is something that you were born to do, something that you just dream about and you can't let go, you have to stay committed to what it is that you're passionate about. You will have people come to you and say, oh, that's a great idea, but did you ever think about doing it this way? Or that's wonderful, but did you ever think about you have to, maybe you should serve these people over here first. Be open to advice, but stick to what you know you're supposed to do. Have your opinion. Not that you're so opinionated that you can't take advice, but you know what you know, what you know, and you're going to stick with that. Social entrepreneurs are change agents. Social justice, you're advocating for things. You're advocating for equity in education. You're advocating for clean water. You're advocating for people to have equal rights and access to food. You're advocating to equal rights in education and, and people can have accessibility. You're advocating for, you know, to eliminate world hunger, um, advocating for people with mental health diagnoses that they get the help that they need. So you may start a business that does just that. 
So you're a change agent. Um, Ricardo said something, we had a meeting, leadership had a meeting the other day and he used a word that I just smiled. It's one of my favorite words. You can write it down. Disruptor. Social entrepreneurs can be disruptors. Your change ain't just disrupting the norm, the status quo. You know, when people say you can't do something and you know that you can, you will become an agent for change, a disruptor to just say to the norm, it may have been like that for the last 20 years, but it's different now. I'm here to, to tell you it's different now. And these are the reasons why. Um, social value creator, you're adding value to what it is that your business will do. Um, you're socially impactful because it's going to affect the community, whether immediate or the community at large, or even as I said, some of you will impact the world. I just know you will. And so um, think of those characteristics. One of the things that I will tell you, and this is my main platform with my one accord consulting firm and every business that I have, I preach it, I sleep it, I live it, I teach it, and it's ethics, it's integrity. If you don't have it, your business will fail. Your relationships will fail. Ethics and integrity should be at the cornerstone of everything that you do. Everything that you do, you must have integrity. When you start your business, if you say you're going to do something, you have to do it. If you can't get it done, you just have to tell the people, I'm sorry, I couldn't get this done. You might be in a contract to deliver service and something happened that may not be your fault. But because you have made a commitment to get something done at a certain time and it doesn't happen during that time, don't ignore it. Just tell people, I'm sorry, I know I committed. Please forgive me. Can you give me an extension? That's integrity. That's not covering things up. That's being transparent. Honor and integrity. I'm going to get off my soapbox on that. I can't help it. Your business will not be successful if you are not trustworthy, if you are not honorable if you are not integral. All right. Also, accountability, being highly accountable. Our speaker last week talked about leadership and accountability, right? So it's not just being accountable to your employees. It's not just being accountable to yourself or people that's around you. It's being accountable also to your clients and to your customers, okay? And again, if something's not happened, if you can't fulfill an order on a timely basis or something broke in transport, be accountable for it. Take ownership of it and make it right. People will respect you when you're transparent, when you're integral, and you do the right thing, okay? And so that's one thing. Another, and I'm going to put these two together, being persistent and being dedicated, okay? So dedicated to your purpose. Don't ever give up. Never give up on you. Never give up on your dream. Never give up on your business. You will have, remember, ebbs and flows. There will be times where you're like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? It's dry. I haven't had a contract. I don't have anything going. I should just give up. Nothing's working for me. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. You look in that mirror and you remember why you started your business. You look at your list of prior customers and even current ones and, and the people that you're providing service to, and they should be your motivation, okay? So be dedicated, but also be, and I should say not but, and also be persistent. Sometimes you're going to need money. I told you, never let money get in the way of you not actualizing your dreams, right? And so being persistent, I'm going to show you um, and share with you an experience that I had. So Project Cultivate has a summer camp. We just had a summer camp and we bring in kids from the inner city, kids that live in crime ridden. They hear gunshots day and night. Drug dealers are everywhere. I mean, murder, all kinds of stuff happens. These kids are, you know, blessed to be alive. Okay. In some situations. And so I came up because I'm passionate about horse riding. I grew up um, riding horses and um, and I know the therapeutic aspect of, of being around horses and it's documented. It's, it's definitely uh, therapeutic to engage with horses, right? And so I just wanted to be able to bring these kids out to the country, out of inner city, into the country, clean air, 
and they're on this farm and I love horses. I think they're absolutely beautiful. There's 31 horses, different breeds of horses on this farm. And so we brought the kids out, right? But in order to run a camp like that, we have to transport the kids. We give them breakfast, we give them lunch, we give them afternoon snacks and food to take home because some of them may not have food. At, in the evening. So the only food that they might get is what we give them that day. Okay. I'm getting emotional because it's really, woo. so we give them food. We um, talk to them about respect for themselves and respect for each other. Um, you know, so there's, there's cost involved. You know, we have this big tent out there and, you know, that cost and food and supplies. We give them t-shirts, we give them backpacks, we give them all kinds of stuff for the week. That costs money. So I reached out to a bank. Remember I said traditional corporations, for-profit corporations sets aside a pot of money to help social causes, right? And so I went to a community bank and I asked them for money to fund this, this summer camp, right? And so the person who was in charge of, of allocating funds and making it happen, because, you know, banks get asked a lot. Other, um, these big companies get asked a lot. There's a lot of organizations out here who have needs, just like Project Cultivate. So I was told no. And I applied early. There's application process. You have to give them all this information. I applied early um, for us. And I was really disappointed that we didn't get any money, especially since my personal money, my business has accounts in this bank. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Okay. So I didn't stop there. I didn't get upset. I didn't back down. I didn't throw the towel in. I was persistent. I found out who the president of the bank was or it was at the time. And so I sent him an email and I told him our story. I got a, an email back from the president of this bank in the evening, the same evening that I wrote my email when I sent it in the morning. And so he apologized. He said he would look into it and see what they could do. The very next day, it was a Saturday and our banks close here. Some of them are open on Saturdays, but they close at 12 noon. Two o'clock, I get a phone call from a gentleman by the name of Mike Wilson. Now, what's so interesting about Mike Wilson is at the time, he didn't know it and I didn't know it that he was going to become the next president of the bank. In two weeks time of me having a conversation with him, he became the president of the bank. But let's back up. On the day that he called me, that Saturday afternoon, and I explained to him what had happened. We had also applied the year before when we launched and we didn't get anything and blah, 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 blah. I'm telling my story, right? At the end of the conversation, this man said to me, Dr. Robin, what do you have need of? How much money do you need? The bank gave me the money and they became our premier sponsor. Can I tell you the camp was so successful? We had the media out there, the television stations were out there. I'm telling you, I was persistent. I was professional in my ask and being a pesty bug. <laughs> but one of my models is, listen, I'm not too proud to beg. If I have to go back and ask for money, be persistent. You go back when you're told no, you don't always take no for an answer. Where there's a will, there's a way. And remember what I said, these corporations for profits set aside a pool of money, a pot of money for issues, just like my camp was going to solve. It was the answer to some problems and they were able to give me or give Project Cultivate a portion of that money. And so be persistent, okay? Be socially aware, understand what's going on in your community, understand what the needs are, understand what's going on in, in your genre, whatever business you're, you're in, what are your competitors going through? What's the climate like? Be aware. And then lastly, characteristic, social entrepreneurs are motivated by more than just money. It's the passion, it's the service, it's helping people the purpose. So always remember that. And I know, that how, how many of you in here have all of these characteristics? How many of you in here have these characteristics? I know a lot of you do. 
I know you, a lot of you do, and I know you probably have more, okay? I want to share this with you real quick because my time, I don't want to go over time. Um, I wanted just to show you this, and I, I picked this up off of, um, I was doing some research and found this, and it's Boundaries of Social Entrepreneurship. One of the other lessons that I want to share with you, and you can write this down, you don't always have to reinvent the wheel. You know, there might be something, a system, a product, a program that you can use instead of having to start from scratch. So I practiced that today. I took this because I was started to, to create my own chart and I found this and I'm like, why would I? So anyway, I just want to sh share that nugget with you. So if you look on the right side, my right, um, for profit, and then you see nonprofit. If you look at the quadrants on here, this sums up everything that I said. Social entrepreneurs, when it's a for-profit, they focus on profit and growth, sustainability. Their companies are sustained. For-profits are sustained by the products they sell, the services they sell. They have shares, stocks, all those things. When you go to the other side of the spectrum to nonprofits and some of our social entrepreneurs that focus on mission, um, the mission is the growth, whereas for-profit, profit is the growth for mission, um, for nonprofits and some entrep social entrepreneurs, it's the mission. There's, some of them can be self-sufficient, but it's really a dependency. So you have nonprofit organizations like Project Cultivate that depends on banks, insurance companies, and other, anyone who wants to sponsor or donate to our cause. And so you have nonprofit organizations who are solely, solely operating off of the kindness of contributions, of sponsorships, of from donations and subscriptions to their business. So keep that in mind. So here's your why. I want to know your why and then the steps that you can take. Why be a social entrepreneur after everything that I said? Because you get a chance to pursue your passion. You get to be in a leadership role. There's leaders in this room. You are leaders already. You showed up. You're showing up every week. You're already a leader. And so you can assume your leadership role in your own businesses, right? You can use your business skills for good. Some of you in here, all of you in here, let me just take out the sum. All of you are intelligent. You're bright. You're creative. You're resourceful. And you can take those business skills that you'll learn from coming to, to um, the, this GEMS program and, and sitting in classrooms and learning and reading and educating yourself, you'll be able to take those skills and use it for good, social good, doing great things, right? As I said earlier, you get to be a disruptor. You get to be a change agent. You can challenge the status quo and press for change. Things that you see aren't right, things that you feel are not, they're just unjust, unjust, you get to be an advocate for change. And then you get to explore innovative solutions to pressing these issues globally. As I keep saying, I just feel it in my spirit. Some of you in this room right now are going to change lives around the world. Your passion will take you internationally. I'm a witness, mine did. I speak to countries. I, I just came back from Helsinki, Finland. I was in Ghana in November. I'm going to Gambia in October, November. I'm all over the world with my passion and my purpose. And some of you are going to do the same thing, okay? Then why, how, we know the why. Now, what steps do you take? You say, well, Dr. Robin, you give us all this information. That sounds great, but I don't know where to start. First thing you want to do is define your mission and your purpose. You have to know your why. What are you passionate about? What is God saying to you? Or what is your spirit speaking to you? What is your mind telling you about the things that make you wake up in the middle of the night, that makes you journal, that makes you happy when you're able to think about one day I'm going to do this. One day I'm going to be able to do this for my people. One day I'm going to be able to solve these issues and help these girls in countries that, that you know, are dealing with menstrual period, you know, cycles where we call it period poverty. They're missing 70 days of school year because during that time of the month, they don't have feminine products. 
So they can't go to school. They're missing 70 days of school per year in comparison to their male counterparts. We need to do something about that. Every child should be able to go to school. Every girl, that time of the month should not be a problem. And so we do what we can, Project Cultivate, to help eliminate period poverty. So that's one of my passions. Do your research. Find out what you want to do. Is anybody else doing that? Is there anybody else out there doing what you what you want to solve? What problem? Entrepreneurs solve problems. You are the answer to someone's problem. Who else is doing it? Do the research. What do I need to know? Then you want to focus on networking and connecting with others. Somebody mentioned that early on when I asked about what is um, social entrepreneurship. And you said connecting and working with others. Absolutely. When you do your research, you might find someone, a company, or find a person who is already doing something similar to what you want to do, or someone who did it and now they're working in another capacity. Don't be afraid to ask them, contact them, email them, find out where they are and send them an email and ask them to mentor you. I did it. I had two male mentors. I'm saying male because they are. When I started International Shades of Beauty, before I launched in Dubai, I reached out to a gentleman by the name of Dr. Joe L. Dudley, who created a, a beauty empire with products. He was the first of many, a beauty school. He had hotels, everything in the industry, well-respected. He sat at the table with Nelson Mandela. When I go into his house and I walk around his house and I'm looking, I'm saying, Dr. Dudley, you've met some, some amazing people in the world. The former Queen Elizabeth, the Queen of England. He sat at the table with her and had tea. But I sit at his feet and I ask him all the questions I can think of while he's still here. He's still alive. He's an older gentleman and he's slowing down. But I ask him as many questions as I can and he loves it. He said, I keep him young. It keeps him going and it keeps me, you know, informed. So find mentors. And then lastly, balance your business goals with your mission. Remember, you got to have business goals. There will be money. Money will come to you. Where there is a vision, you can write this down, there will be provision. God always provides. Where there is a vision, there will be provision. One of the last things I wanted to drop before we end this is I want you back where I said, be persistent, write this down, write this down. Persistence breaks resistance. Persistence breaks resistance. When I was told no, I couldn't get money from the bank. I was persistent. I broke that resistance. I got the money. And not only did I get the money for this past camp, He's already committed, Michael Wilson, the person that is the now president of this bank is, is committed, has committed to giving me what I need next year. Persistence breaks resistance. Now, lastly, here's some social entrepreneurs on the ride. Screenshot this screen. I've overstepped my bounds in time already. I apologize, Ricardo and Simone, I'm so sorry. But social entrepreneurs on the rise, I want you all to just screenshot these. These are people who look like us who are doing some pretty amazing things. Charlotte, her clean stove initiative, she poured $20 million into Kenya and she's helping to feed people with these clean stoves. Brandon, down in the bottom corner, Brandon's partner was murdered by the police. And Brandon, out of his passion to bring social justice to the criminal justice system, especially where pre police brutality, I know here in the US, it happens a lot with especially African-American males. He created a chat, um, chat box IT, an app that monitors police activity. And it's, it's amazing. So everyone on here, they're on the rise. They're doing some pretty amazing things and they are just like you and just like me. My time is up, ladies, and I thank you so much for your time. I hope I said something that helped you, that gets you thinking. If there's anything I can do to help you in your journey, please reach out to me. Please, please, I'll put my information um, in the chat, or you can reach out to Simone and she can give it to you. And so lastly, I want to tell you, 
follow your dreams. If you're going to dream, dream big. Your purpose matters. Your purpose matters. Your dreams matter. So let's go, go, go and go get them. I'm done. Simone, I turn it back over to you. Thank you so, so much, Dr. Jaffe. Thank you. Um, wow. What a presentation. You can hear the passion. Um, we just want to thank Dr. Jaffe for sharing her experiences with us. Um, very comprehensive on social entrepreneurship. Um, you know, the reason why you do it and the steps to take if you are interested. You brought me back to my why, Dr. Jaffe, and give me that inspiration to continue going. Um, you really need persistence. Um, you reminded me of, you know, some doors that are closed and you have to persist in order to get over, you know, the various hurdles because you will have no's, but you have to keep pressing forward. Okay. So thank you so much again for that. Young ladies, now is your chance. It's your turn to express your passions, your ideas. Um, what do you want to do with your future? I believe Lorraine was one of the young ladies who raised her hand in terms of already being into entrepreneurship. Entrepreneur. So, um, like I decided to do my education and what I signed up me for this coding course, which inspired her too. And like this with the coding to teach us more about stuff. And then we moved on to entrepreneurship, which is the course we're doing now, which could help you start your business. And they talked about business goals and plans. And the plan I'm doing now is to make a crochet business. So my name for the crochet business is Cute and Cozy, cozy Creations, I think it was. And I think sometime next month, I have to make like a lot to sell and to present on everything I've done so far. So I guess it's a business I just started up, but I hope to make it a grand one in the future. Wow, congrats, Lorraine. That's wonderful. So you're into crocheting, right? Right, so that's part of fashion, fashion and designing business. Can I say something? Am I allowed to jump in, Simone? Am yeah, I allowed sure. To say something? Okay. I think that's amazing that you're doing a crochet business. Let me tell you, um, there's an organization here in the U.S., and this is something that you might want to think about as you're doing it. Who would be the recipient of your your products that you make? When you crochet, let me ask you that. Who's who's the, the target market? Who's Who are you giving or selling these um, beautiful uh, products to? I think they um, will be mostly marketed towards children because I like to make crochet toys so far. Okay, to children. And so there's an organization here in the U.S. that um, cater to, they, they crochet blankets for men and women who are in the military, who were injured while in the military. Um, you can do that for children who are in the hospital. You know, give them blankets and things. You can start a... And you have an organization, you said already, correct? You already have your organization. So um, here in the U.S., you can get funding for things like that. I, I'm not sure about where you are, but you can raise money. You can get co companies to sponsor and to help you uh, get supplies that you need and be able to um, give these beautiful pieces, whatever it is that you're making, be it blankets or sweaters or whatever for, for children, to be able to help uh, uh, help you on your journey in your business. So think think about that as well. That's why I'm asking the questions because it it's it's a big thing here in the US and people donate tons of money um, because they love the vets. We love our military men and women who serve. We love children. We'll give to a cause. I gotta say here in the US is there's a child that needs a blanket because they're cold. Somebody's gonna donate. Okay, so think about that. So I wish you well. I know it's going to be amazing. Keep going, keep going. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Robin. Thank you. Um, so think about what sort of products, you know, uh, that you're creating, just, um, you know, clothes, uh, as Dr. Robin said, blankets, um, etc. and who you're targeting, right? So feel free to reach out to us. Um, do you have any questions, any um, support that you would need at this point in time, Lorraine? 
Not really, because already they already sponsored us by like two years needed. But see, they'll probably come in some later times. I just have to not procrastinate and Christian as much as I have to. Yeah, don't procrastinate. So you have to, you know, produce your product and you have to do your marketing, you know, etc. So it's a lot involved. Okay. So any support and advice, feel free to reach out to us. Right? Thank it's you. It's a wonderful, wonderful idea. Okay. Right. So we'd love to see some of your pieces. So you can send some photos, okay, via email, right? Lovely. Lorraine, do you do you have a logo? Uh yeah, I'll send a picture in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, Ricardo's really good with um graphics, so he can support you with that. <laughs> right, guys. So anybody else? Come on, guys, share your experience and share your passion. What do you want to do? This is your time. We're supposed to have Jade here, but I don't know if she's shy. Jade? I see Petronella has a hand raised. Petronella? Sure. Good morning, everyone. Um, I um, okay. So I am an entrepreneur. I started a business with my boyfriend or my person at the time. Started making draft boards during the COVID time, and that launched after doing cupboards and vanity and those sorts of stuff. It's going well, but what I really wanted to raise my hand for is the social entrepreneurship. I always had like a passion towards mental health and developing like young women because while I was growing up, I, I dealt with certain mental health issues. <laughs> I would say like depression and stuff like that. And like as I grew, like I learned certain things like what you should do to come out of that state and while you're in it you doesn't really know who to go to or what to do and I've always thought about like starting something or doing something for the community to reach out to the youths or like any any person that deals with these problems so the only thing <laughs> problem with that is that I don't know how to start I was always thought I was thinking about doing like a Christmas um a Christmas event like for kids and you know with the kids coming out adults will come out teens will come out like a sports thing or for easter or something like that the problem is that i don't know how to start it <laughs> thanks so much for sharing that passion Petronella. we all have that passion here as well especially you know with regards to mental health ricardo is an advocate um so you're not alone we'll work together to make that a reality ricardo I think she's just the person we need on board right now, right? After that meeting we had the other day. Yeah, definitely interested yeah. in assisting you with that, Petronella, because, yeah. yeah, I am a mental health advocate. I actually produce a podcast with one of the guests we had, J.L. Valdez. She's a counseling psychologist. And we do a lot of conversations with a lot of different people. So if you're interested in getting into mental health conversations and reaching a community well first and foremost i will send you links to the show so that you could see for yourself that it does not have to be a complicated thing i was telling the leadership team this week actually that it is literally about having the conversations in the spaces that you are that is where you start right it that is how you develop platform that is how you develop the experience that is how you develop a reputation so that you could do the work that you want to do uh, we will definitely be following up in terms of helping you figure out the the stepping stones to getting into the advocacy to develop any program. And I will tell you, it could be something as simple as sitting down with somebody that you care about and having a conversation with them. That is how it starts. Everybody thinks that developing a social entrepreneurship platform is about uh, getting the funding and doing the business plan and is about you know, get to need the production team and go and get your logo and no advocacy starts with the work. It starts with the work first because the actual challenge someone has is very different to what you might think it is. So you haven't had this personal experience with mental health challenges. You know what it is like and what it is you have to go through. 
because you have that personal experience. So what I would do is to advise you to continue developing that story, develop that testimony, become comfortable having that conversation. I love that you actually brought that to us and we are a, a newly knit family. That says to me that you have the confidence, that you have the boldness to go into this type of advocacy. And it says that you've healed enough from your trauma to start addressing it and to want to help other people not deal with it. There are way too many people who are still rooted in trauma trying to help other people heal, right? What happens is when you meet something that challenges you, you revert straight back to the point of trauma. So the best advice I would give you in terms of starting is to continue speaking up, continue having the conversations, how, learn how to have the conversations with the people you are comfortable with, and then learn how to have the conversations with people you are uncomfortable with. Because I will tell you, you will go to our sponsor and the Lord will put somebody in your path and they will look you dead in the eye and the eyes will glaze over with passion listening to you speak. And then you will walk into a room and someone will be staring straight through you with absolutely zero interest in what it is you're talking about. We have to learn how to function in these different environments. And this is where more engagements in terms of utilizing the space around you, having a conversation is going to develop that experience. So your first step, yes, work on planning the event, but make sure that when the event happens and the caller on stage to speak as the founder and as the person behind it, that that is not the first time you realize, wait a minute, I have to stand up and represent the organization or the event that I crafted. It is not always about building the team around you. Sometimes it's about being able to do it. So I will advise you, speak. Speak with boldness, with confidence, and with belief that what you're doing is important. The event, you'll find people coming to you and asking you, or they will bring to you the idea, Gil, you know, I was thinking about doing so by so. Because you've presented yourself as an authority on it just because you have the confidence to act on it. And that will be the confirmation that you're heading in the right path when the people start showing up without you having to go out there and ask for them. I firmly believe that purpose is a God-given thing. And this lesson, this, sorry, hear me this lesson. This conversation is for the other woman in the room as well. Your purpose, a lot of the times, aligns with your personality. It aligns with the experiences that you've had. I, I personally don't believe that purpose can be expressed without some level of God involvement. So you just become comfortable speaking in faith to the people around you. Because, and ladies, please, I want all you to understand something. The vast majority of people who are going to support your business or your cause are not going to be people that you know. The majority of your rejection is first going to come from the people around you because that is not their mission. It is yours. The reason that a business grows outward is because the majority of the support you're going to get, the majority of your customers, going, it's going to be from people who don't know you, which is why you have to be professional, which is why you have to develop a structure to not just gain the attention, but to keep the attention. Because your friends and family could only mine your business for so long. Right. So just continue speaking up with the courage that you have. I'm sorry I went long, but I have a feeling that I spoke to more than one person in the room this morning. So thank you for that opportunity, Petronella. And I, what, what country are you in? Trinidad and Tobago. All right, great. Well, then, great. I already have a plan. I already have a plan. <laughs> You're going to get interviewed on why it is you want to do this type of thing before the year done. I will help you as best as I can through the foundation and other projects to help you develop your, your space so that you could do that job. That is my commitment okay. on behalf of the foundation. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks so much, um, Ricardo. And um, Petra, what area are you in? North or South? I'm in South. Penal. Penal, baby. Oh, okay, perfect. Right. Wonderful. So, everything will work out. Don't worry. Okay? We just had this conversation this week and I think you came with that there's a purpose why okay so wow um ricardo you just dropped some nuggets there i think um especially 
letting the girls know that the support um, normally comes from outside. Sometimes a lot of times we look for the support from in within, uh, within our circle, you know, our comfortable circle, our comfort zone. And a lot of times we don't get that support from, you know, family and friends because it's our vision, as you said, um, and it's not their vision. So they don't see it, they don't buy into it. Um, but don't let that, you know, um, deter you from your vision and your purpose and your plan. Just keep pressing forward and the support will come. Okay. Hi. Uh, I was, what what actually touched me was the fact, fact where, um, isn't it Dr. Robert? Say, don't let money be the problem, right? I had... I, I I just do like little businesses during I come down to Christmas time. I had one going throughout the the um, the year, but they kept back was money, right? Because I put out because I'm not working, you know, like little help and here and there that I was getting, right? And a situation come across that pushed me back from pursuing it, what I was doing. So throughout the year, as as I said before, doing another one where I doing like drinks and stuff and thing. Only doing it because why? Family wise, you know, a little iffy. And it was going good, but the money factor where the they put out could be a iffy is what pushed me back. What advice they could give me that you know what pushed me towards actually willing to do more of the drinks and stuff that I am doing. So you said you do drinks around Christmas time, right? Yeah. Is that like um sorrel um punch of creme, those type of like bottle drinks to sell? What type yeah, of Yeah, I do I just do bottle? like um sorry like your is like a alcohol beverage, right? So it's like for mostly mm -hmm. older people. I doing I sorry like you I did a pineapple. This time I say you know let me try and do a mango because like you know it's mm -hmm. more local. So like the, those are the three stuff that I have been doing so far. But it's going good. But I don't know like maybe people see it as it may be a little spicy. The most important that is what I've been doing. Okay, so yeah, you've priced up your raw materials and you've added your profit and you've come to a comfortable price where you know you're making a profit, right? Yes. Okay. Have you researched to see what prices other people are selling similar products like yourself that you wouldn't price yourself out of the market? Um. Because that's one of the things to sometimes you I know, did? You're pricing yourself out of the market. So that's something to look at as well. I did look at it, but you know, I just was trying my best to not go out of the way to say for people to be like, you know, this girl's so expensive, I can't afford it, you know, like stuff. So, so mine right. is some people would sell their sorry thing like one like two hundred and some dollars. Mine's is like one forty and one thirty and one fifty. Like that is my price range, you know? Because right. I know stuff is expensive these days. So like that is my price range I have been putting out. Right. So you have to Even find a balance. Is expensive. Yeah, but you have to find a balance, meaning that you have to ensure you're making a profit and then you're not pricing yourself out of the market. So once you found that balance there, then your challenge would be in the marketing marketing to the right people who will be able to unwilling to pay the price for your product so um you have to like probably sampling have you done like any sampling at public places where people can actually taste it before so they can say well okay taste good i'll have a bottle something like that so you have to look at your marketing strategy did you try any of that I'm not a person that would just go and say, you know, hey, you know, I'm doing this and I would go and speak to people. If I'm doing it, it's like, you know, I do it through flyers and stuff and saying, like, I post it on right. social media and, like, you know, right. stuff like that. 
where I still have to try different uh, means of marketing because it's a drink people may want to have the experience to taste it, you know, before they actually buy. So that's another way yeah. to look at things, yeah. So what we'll do is um, we can have a conversation after um, about scheduling oh. timing and we can have a conversation, right? Okay. And I'll see if I can support you with that. Right. One of the like a wonderful yeah. idea because One. Christmas is right around the corner again. And then you'll have to look at, um, you know, producing your drinks in a timely manner, making sure you source your raw materials and your, your bottles and your labels and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, guys, yeah. at, in the interest of the time frame that we've set, we are at two hours, right? Now, at this point, I would like to thank everyone who's been here so far. And we want to thank you for joining us for another session of the Sapphire Miriam Foundation Dream Big Girls Empowerment Program. That is where we could comfortably cut and wrap up the recording. But for those of you who are interested in finding out how you can get the help and the support for the business ventures that you have or the ideas that you have, even if to turn them into advocacy, we invite you to stay on. We are going to be present to try to reach as many of you as we possibly can. But the official part of the session, we're good to go. But for those who are interested in getting the feedback, the mentorship, the advice, we invite you to stay on and continue speaking with us. Simone, is that okay? That is fantastic, Ricardo. I think it's absolutely have, perfect. So those we should have a leave... part two. This is so interesting. And if a lot of the girls want to share the businesses, we should yeah. have a part two. That is a great yes. idea. That's I a agree. great idea. But, um, you can have an like unofficial together. session. We could either do an unofficial session or because we already yeah. roll in. Uh, Next week? Are you, yeah, I think because we've covered the issue, now we could yeah. lean into the mm -hmm. to the feedback, the mentorship, the dialogue. Yeah. Are you guys okay with us doing, well, continuing this session next week, helping you guys figure out how to turn your ideas okay, into so. advocacy and entrepreneurship? Let's get yeah. some yeses and some so, hands yeah. up. So yes. Yes. Some hands up. up. Yes, yes. Especially the girls didn't have the opportunity to share their passion. Mm -hmm. So let's turn those passion into something it's lucrative. Intended. Yes, please. Yes. Okay, yeah. Awesome. So, right, so let's see the chat. Yeah, let's see it in the chat. Hands. Um, and or turn on the cameras or raise your hands. Something we just okay. need the evidence that this is what the team, this is what the the the, the gems wanted. Right. Because we've that covered way, the information next week, yes. you could jump straight into the so the ideas the and the mentorship and yeah. Yeah, okay. oh, that looks like an overwhelming course, majority. Yes. Right. So um, I don't know if a doctor. Yes, a big yes, a big yes. Kali, a big yes. Of course, yes. Right. So wow. Dr. Joppy was going to say something, and yeah, Debra yeah. and Shadika have their hands up. I think once we touch those, we could call it. Yeah. I, I just thank you, Ricardo. I just wanted to respond to Arena mm -hmm. um, to, to follow up what actually what Simone was saying is like it, it really comes down to marketing and strategy, mm -hmm. Arena. And we can talk about this more. Hi, Simone. The follow up for Arena um, and what I talked about during the presentation on Saturday for her with her drinks is, um, you know, people buy from whom they know, like and trust. Um, she needs to work on building her brand. Uh, I spoke about her um, doing pop-ups is what we call them. So go to different office building complexes where there's, you know, people working during the day where there's foot traffic and perhaps she can give away samples of her drinks. So even presentation would be key. Uh, she could have it in the bottles, like in a in a um, basket. If it's something that needs to be cold, a cooler where there's nicely decorated, have ice where it's on ice, but then also have you know little mini cups where they could sample the product. Um, do it that way. She can do stuff like that around the holiday. Find out where there's cultural fests or festivities where there's a lot of people, and see can she. Uh, attend some of those festivals, maybe be a vendor at the festivals and let people taste her product. Once they taste, if it's really good, then they'll buy it. And then they'll also be willing to tell other people. So word of mouth is another way to get the product out. But first and foremost, she needs to let people sample the product 
taste it. If they love it, they'll buy it. And then I don't know the regulatory requirements in Trinidad, but she needs to find out what the, what that is in terms of food and and um, drinks, things like that, in terms of heat requi- quality, heat requirements. If it's really hot, there's a certain temperature you have to keep food at. Does she need license to vend or even do pop-ups? We're here in the states. We have a lot of regulatory requirements. Um, in and around food and health safety and the safety of food when you're vending or selling like restaurants or even street vendors where we have um, food carts and food cars and things like that, food trucks, I should say. So she should do that as well. Check out uh, the regulatory requirements and see if she needs any type of certification um, or license to operate, to be able to be a street vendor also so to speak so when i talk about heat like when it's really really hot um do you have to sell product at a certain temperature um if it's in the bottle it doesn't matter or if you're out on the street does it have to be cold chilled by something um because if it's something in the product that has milk or any type of dairy in it where it would spoil and go bad and people could get deathly ill so that's why I was asking the question on, on beverage service. So, but anyway, that's it. All right. Talk to you later. Good day, everyone. I know I've been busy for the morning, so um, I'm going to make this quick. Um, I was going to ask Miss Doctor. Um, I'm a young person, has two children, living with someone, but um, don't get a push, have many ideas of business but it's just not there because I am busy at work. But I want to be a businesswoman, own my own business. So I don't know what is the explanation you can give me along with it, but I'm a person willing, very pushy, but don't get the brace. I would get the brace from the children and they're like um, 10 and 8. Well, your, 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 um, scenario is common to a lot of, to a lot of women and men, but we're going to focus on women and girls where we're busy. We're, we're working some work. I, I have five businesses that I'm running that I'm running. Yes. I have people that help out in, in different businesses, but it's, it's a lot because there's, there's a saying, you know, if, when you're an entrepreneur, if you don't kill, you don't eat. Do you know what that means? Yeah. If I don't get contracts and if I don't get customers and I don't get clients, how am I going to pay? I live in this house. How am I going to pay my, my mortgage and my electric and all those things? I got to work. So I'm nonstop working, working, working. Remember, remember when I said, you know, your why and then the steps that you take. I understand you're very busy. You have two children and you're working. But when you have a passion, and you know you want to you want to be a businesswoman. You want to have your own business. You want to have another stream of income, so maybe you don't have to work as hard as you do for somebody yeah. else. You want to work hard for yourself. But until you get to that point, you have to find the time. It may be sacrifice. Entrepreneurship is sacrifices, y'all. You know, some people think, oh, I have my own business. I can get up when I want to. I can go to work. I can do this, and I can come home. I can go get my hair done, my nails done, and travel around the world. And just said, uh, uh-uh. uh. No, 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 no. That's not how it is. Maybe for some, but for the masses, no. And so begin to journal. Do you journal? I'm going to say this to all the girls on here. Do you journal? Do you write down when things come to your head as you're working your day job? Do you have a phone, an iPhone or Android phone or a pad that you can keep with you at all times and start writing down ideas that come to your head? When you can steal away for 10, 15 minutes, meditate on those things, speak to those things. And we can go deeper into this. I would love to help you. I would love to help you um, figure out what it is that you want to do. Remember when I said be- in the beginning, when we got to the to the steps that you have to take, you have to be able to tell us what your passion is. Tell us what the project is. 
What is it? What's the business? What is it that you're really passionate about that keeps you awake sometimes at night that anytime you think about it, you just can just explode because you just like, I know this is going to work. I know I will be good at it. What is it? That's what we need to hear. And once I know what that is, oh my God, it's going to be easy for me to get you on the path and tell you how to, how to get there. If I can't help you, if it's not something in my, in my uh, wheelhouse, I know people who can help you get there. We're all on here, Ricardo and Simone and Deborah and the other um, partners know people who know people who know people that can help each and every one of you. If we don't have their immediate answer, we know who does, but you have to know what it is that you want to do. Saying that you're passionate and you know you want to be a business owner, doing what? Doing what? I can't tell you what you're good at because I don't know you, but you can tell me what you're good at and tell me what you want to do and I can help you get there, okay? Okay. If I... What's her passion? You know, what is it that she wants to get into? Um, I like, um, right now my main focus is um chicken, rearing. Okay, so agriculture around rearing. there, but livestock. Yeah. Okay, so then you have to assess, do you have the space, you know, to do that? So you have to um, assess, I have the, the space, but the place that I'm living, it's not mine, so we are renting. Mm -hmm. So, so where, where in our... Just give me a general idea. Um, Guyana. Okay. You're in the main town or? Or in Money Boy? No. I'm on the East Bank. Okay. Craig, man. You from Craig? No, Diamond um, Grove. Oh, well, I'm from Craig. We're neighbors. Uh, well, sometimes <laughs> could <Okay>. visit. <laughs> I, I soon come for my all money. I come and claim what is mine. Yes, Deborah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Siddika, we'll look at um, giving you some advice. Once we know what you want, you want to do, we can, you know, give you some advice as to how to go about setting that up. Yeah, right? because um, I have a a course I'm doing right now with the military, right. and it's um tailoring. Okay. So since I've been doing tailoring there, I'm not finding myself more interested of making jacket, pants, mm -hmm. shirts, and these different things. I'm like, right now I'm on the process of sewing my children uniform. Okay. Well, okay. I'm getting there. I make bag for my own self. Sometimes when I make my bag, my children will be like, mommy, the bag is me on, right? <laughs> so I was like, no. <laughs> so I see other things I am like into. That you can get into. But do you have yes. a, a capital is an issue as well as the lack of support, right? Yes, I do. No problem. As Dr. Joppy advice, start writing down. Let the main thing, start journaling, writing down your ideas, what you want to do, and focus on one, well, one main thing to start with. Yes, I mean, you seem to have a lot of, you know, talents. You want to go into the um, livestock, agriculture, and then you're doing your uh, tailoring. So you might not be able to focus on both at the same time. So now we're in on which one is most feasible at this point in time, you know, and where your passion lies, and then we can move from there, right? Yeah. So just try and flesh out your journal, flesh out your ideas and see which is most feasible. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so and, and, you, and while you're looking, like if you if, if raising chickens is really a passion, like I can make some money doing this now. Um, you know, one of the things that we do here where even where I live, we have community yards and things like that. And so businesses contract with the farmers. The farmers are doing all the work out there. They're growing crops and some of the the um the fields and the land is owned by the government and they contract with citizens like you and like me to um, have our businesses there and they buy our products for, you know, for prisons, for um, homes, for, you know, for retail and, and even some of that stuff is shipped out overseas. So it's something to think about. I mean, we're dealing with different countries and different laws. I've worked internationally in countries all around the world. So I understand how to research laws and find out what applies. But something as you're doing your research, because remember, one of the things I said, steps that you take, you want to research to see who else is doing it. Is it already done? How, how do they do it? Is it leasing a piece of land? Can we rent land somewhere and you put the chickens on? Or can we help you uh, buy land? Where's land available 
um, and you get these chicken, we help you get the chickens and start raising them, you know? Yeah. So there's so many things that, that we can do, um, but we have to start somewhere doing the research. Those are things where, where would you do it? If I said, okay, I will fund your business right now. I'll give you the money to start your chicken farm. Where are you going to start? What, where's the land? Do you know where land would be? Um, yeah. How much does it cost? Um, for the lands, we have to go into housing, but there's a way that you can have lease land on the highway or Moko or any other places that they has lease land. You write a letter and you go into housing, lands and survey, not housing, lands and survey, and they give you, but it's a long process. You have to wait, but at that time you can take up the land. So when they when they come, they would see you doing things on the land. Okay. So that's why I said buy land, lease land. So you tell me there's land that you can lease. So we need to have a strategy. Remember earlier when I was talking about having a business, being business minded and strategy to, um, you know, to be able to, to start this business. So we have to have a strategy and a plan. Now that I know a little bit more, we can focus more on, on curtailing something and crafting something specifically for what it is that you want to do with this, you know, raising chickens. So we'll, you know, we'll definitely talk to you more about this and help you in that process. Understanding is crucial. So thank you for explaining. Now I can help you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I'd like I'd like Just to forget. stress something very important about what Dr. Joppy said. It was actually very similar to what it is I was going to suggest in terms of the journaling. You have a situation right now where you have more ideas than you have time. So you speak to the people around you about it. But if you do not write those ideas down, then you are expecting the people around you to remember what your ideas will. There will be a point in time where you will have more I more time and you wouldn't remember what the ideas were. Maybe you are in a season right now where you're not getting the support, you're not getting the time, you're not getting the resources, but you're getting the ideas. Yeah. The ideas are the resource. Write down the things that are coming to your mind. Do what Dr. Joppy says. And when you have an idea now, start following up. If I was to get my yes to follow up on this idea right now, what would I need? Uh, with no disrespect, but she asked you how much it would cost and you didn't even answer that yet. You don't know if she had a check put down and say, I could have sent this to you. So you told her all the reasons why you had difficulties or the road that you would have to go down, but you didn't answer the question she asked you about how much it would cost. That is the type of mentality we have to address if you want to go into entrepreneurship it is not just about having a vision and a finish line and you don't know how to run the race it is up and this is a conversation i've had with a lot of people recently yes you want to get where you're going but you still have to pass where you have to pass to get there what is the road i am going to take what is my strategy if i don't know what my strategy is what do i want to do and what is it going to take for me to get there? That is all a strategy is, you know, breaking down your route. So write the ideas down, but don't just write the ideas down because if the idea is all you have right now, start looking at how can I develop this idea so when I get more things, I can do something with them. Instead of at that point in time realizing, wait, my contract finish, I got fired, I get evicted, and all of a sudden, I have all the time in the world. I have all the need, and I don't know. I have to start looking for. Oh gosh, you know, I really wanted to do this chicken thing, you know. And now you start looking around at land that is available. Maybe somebody in your community, or maybe in another community, has land put down that they would be willing to partner with somebody that says, "Well, listen, if you could find something to do with this land instead of it sitting down here doing nothing." Then they get a little something from what it is you make, but now they land not sitting idly. What I mean is, don't just have an idea, bounce off somebody, and because they don't support you, all right, wait, look, nobody helping me, or look, I have no money. No, the idea right now is the resource. 
the idea is the resource, flesh out the idea. So when somebody comes who has a yes in mind, you could support it. I'm going to use a quick example here because I, I already know we over time, but this is important. Eh? If you collect rainwater, because that is how you bathe, that is how you cook, that is how you wash. If you collect rainwater and rain not falling, you have a choice. You could sit down and say, way, no rain. Or you could start organizing your containers. Because if when rain starts falling, all you have is a bucket, it does not matter how much rain falls, all you will be able to use is a bucket. If you organize your barrel, when rain fall, you'll be able to get a barrel. If you organize a tank, when rain fall, you could fill your tank. The thing is, in until the resource comes, our job is to prepare so that when it comes, we could use as much of it as possible. So when you have an idea, write it down. Because there will be a point in time where you get to act on that idea if you so want. And somebody waiting to invest in an idea and you want to be able to show them how they could do that comfortably. So, do study that rain and fall in. Prepare for when rain falls. You could either get a bucket, a barrel, or a tank. But when that rain comes, how much you get from it, that would have been based on what it is you do when rain wasn't falling. So, if all you have right now is an idea, that is the resource to work with. Thank have a good day. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, Shadika, we okay there, right? We understand. Put your ideas down and let's start working, right? Okay. Nice. So, we have, um, I believe it's Tashana, the chat. She's um, just up my alleyway. She's saying she wants to do natural remedies like soap, natural soaps and scrubs and that kind of stuff. Um, do you want to unmute your mic and tell us a bit more about your ideas? That is something that I'm very passionate about and I'm, I'm also into as well. So, I'll be able to offer you some support there. So please unmute and give us an idea as to what you're into. Um, so, hi, good evening. I was thinking of doing like natural remedies, soaps, like for lightening your skin and for removing dark spots and stuff. Ha have you done any courses with the natural soaps and? No, soaps? but I was doing research on YouTube because I recently left school. Okay. And I just home for the while until results come out. Am I located? In Sobo Village Library. Oh, okay. Nice. All right. So you're doing your research on YouTube, right? Yes. At the moment. Um, any other research you're doing? I also started to do some homemade soaps. Okay. So what method are you using? You're using the melt and pour base or you've um, investigated the cold press or how the are melt. you making them? You doing the melt and pour soap base? Yeah. Yes? Yes, I am. Okay. So you've already got it up your equipment, the molds, etc., and that kind of stuff, and ingredients. No, but I'm currently taking them down because my father would like to know what I need exactly. Right. Okay. All right. So um, I'm into that as well. So we'll have a conversation offline, right? And I'll be able to help you with that, okay? All right. Right, so anybody else? Um, okay, so we have Melanie in the chat. Hi, good morning. Yes, it is. It isn't Miss Melanie, it's her daughter, yeah, ma'am. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm telling them. It. Yeah, it's our daughter, and I'm very much passionate about doing hair and nails. And I would love to get some advice on where to start and how to begin about, and how to begin going around the idea of doing hair and nails. 
Well, you're speaking my language, Melanie. This is Dr. <laughs> Robin, and we have International Shades of Beauty, which is an international hair, fashion, and beauty, wellness, business trend show. We bring people from all around the world who do, they educate on hair, on nails, everything, everything. So here's my question to you. You're interested in, you said, doing hair. You know, what does that mean? Do you want to be a hairstylist or do you want to own a salon? Well, from a very much, well, I would like to become a cosmetologist, somebody that actually owns their own business and like doing hair and nails. How how old are you? I'm 16 when 17 October coming. 16 going on 17. So in order to be a cosmetologist, again, I'm speaking from my knowledge in, in different countries that I worked in and here in the U.S., um, here in the U.S., you have to be licensed. You should be licensed. So you have to go to school. You have to get educated so that yeah. you can do hair and have, you know, and, and nails. And you're certified in that, showing that you're an expert. You've been educated. So I would trust you to do my hair, right? So that's the first step. Have you enrolled in a school? Are you, are you um, able to start school, a cosmetology program? No, I ain't been able to get into, get into any as yet, but my mommy is actually trying to get me into one. So, yeah. So that's my advice. First and foremost, if that's your passion, that's what you want to do. Start out by going and getting the education, going to school and learning and getting certified. Because after you do that, man, yes. you can intern while you're doing it working in somebody else's salon so you get that type of experience and and really understand the business of having it um having your own salon and what it takes to run your own uh salon or even you might you might some people have a dream and a vision of having their own beauty school their own cosmetology school but you got to start somewhere first step is go to school and get licensed so that you can do it um, and then you can either start your business right out of school if you want, or I tell people intern with others so that you can see what it takes to run a business, learn everything you know from somebody who's already doing what you want to do. And you'll learn how to do it better, how to beat your competition. What can your salon offer that others don't? You know, how can you be a cut above everyone else? But education is key. Certification is first. So that's your first start. Okay, thank you. And we can continue the conversation next week at our next session. And this is an opportunity for you to spend the week thinking about what it is you would like to do so that we could properly help you develop an idea that you may not have had until today. Or you might have had an idea and you didn't realize that it was part of your purpose, part of your social entrepreneurship. So think about what your passion is. Think about what problem you would like to solve. Yes. And as we've heard earlier, it could be a problem that you want to solve based on what your own experiences have been, or it could be a problem based on what it is you see going on around you. And next week, God willing, yes, I would like to talk a little bit more about how much of entrepreneurship is problem solving, because we don't understand that everything that someone sells or buys is a problem solver everything from the stuff of our earring to our thimble to our socks it doesn't matter it is a problem solver right and that is leaning a little bit into the marketing aspect of it in terms of how do we position the thing that you want to do as a solution so that people are more willing to receive it so think about it guys Again, go back over the questions. What are, what are your passions? I'm going to post some more stuff to prompt you, but what are your passions and what are the problems you want to solve? And we'll pick back up with you next week, God willing, I'll, I'll, and we're going straight into question and answer next week. Okay. Is everyone Thank all right you. with that? Yes. All right. Yes, sir. Well, is there any after? Yes, half past 12. 12. Yes, so it's been a wonderful session. Thanks so much, Ricardo. Thank you, Dr. Joppy. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, everyone. It's been a wonderful and interactive session today. I think the girls have learned a lot and are looking forward to learning even more with regards to entrepreneurship and how they can go into their own ventures.
I think this is the whole purpose of this, being able to support you ladies so that you can get off the ground with your ideas. Okay. So next week, please, Alon, have a wonderful lunch. And for those in the UK, dinner, Adelia and Jazz, I think they're probably gone already. I'm not sure. Because <laughs> it's nighttime there, almost. Okay, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. You'll see you next Bye. week. Have a good week ahead. Thank you. Thanks, Deborah. Continue for being a star that you are. Thanks for sharing your ideas, ladies. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.